Welcome everyone uh, to the uh, June edition of J Dr. Jaspersoft webinar. Um, so with me today, I have my colleague, uh, customer success architect, Me Mehul Bamania. Please correct me if I'm <laughs> mispronouncing your name. Um, so my name is Kamal Kumlin, so I'm the host today. And um, yeah, so today the topic is uh, single sign-on with Okta and just Purport Server. So we'll kind of go through um, you know, the basics of uh, single sign-on with Jasper and and how to do it specifically with specifically with Okta. And uh, so Mehul's going to um, present a few slides and, um, you know, and run a demo so we can see how it's done. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, just a quick note on our next session. Uh, we don't have a, a topic for you yet, but uh, it's going to be uh, on the second Thursday of every month, as usual, at 9 a.m. Pacific, like today, and uh, on July 14th. So that being said, um, Mehul, please go ahead and go through the agenda and the rest of the slides, please. Okay, thank you, Kamal. Um, right, so we, as Kamal said, we're going to talk about Okta integration today, specifically with JRS. Uh, but uh, before we dive into things, uh, let's just have a look at the agenda for today. Um, so we'll quickly go through single sign-on overview, what it is, why why organizations use it, and what are the advantage and um, what it provides. And then we'll talk about specifically Okta and what it is and why why um, why we should use it. We'll then talk about the standards um, that are there for kind of um, implementing these kind of uh, processes. And then we'll do a little demo on um, development server of Okta. Um, and we'll try to connect Jasper server to it and we'll see how the single sign-on works. And finally, we'll have some key takeaways and question and answer session at the end. So if you have any questions, just um, put it in the chat. All right, so let's move on. Uh, so single sign-on overview, I think um, a lot of you would already know what single sign-on is. Essentially, it's just, um, as the name suggests, it's, you know, sign in once for any number of applications. So the idea is that user would sign in once to a particular authentication server, and um, they should be able to then use that session across number of applications, and they don't have to log in via, you know, different applications for different um, logins. So um, log in once and use it as many times as you want. That's the idea. It kind of gives a lot of um, productivity for the um, organizations, it increases IT productivity, it improves uh, security, and it also reduces risks. So users don't have to you know, remember many passwords or write down anything. There's one password, one sign on for everything. And it also streamlines users' experience. So you know, they don't have to keep logging into different applications. So single sign on, it's a uh, it's a must nowadays, especially when organizations are using, um, you know, many applications and it just increases every day. So, um, yeah, let's move on. Um, so single sign-on in Jasper Report Server, what do we, what do we mean by uh, single sign-on in Jasper Report Server? So Jasper Report Server supports many types of single sign-on, including you know, LDAP and Active Directory. So LDAP was one of the kind of oldest implementation we have. We still have it out of the box support for it. So we don't have to do kind of any customizations. Customers can just, you know, implement it themselves. We also support central authentication services. We call it CAS. Um, we also support SAML and OAuth-based SSOs. Uh, so this would be like Okta, Azure AD or any latest any new cloud versions, uh, cloud-based uh, application. And finally, we also have pre-authenticated token approach, um, token SSO, which is our favorite one. And um, this really isn't a single, uh, actually isn't an authentication, but it's just a token to kind of pass information from authenticated application to Jasper Report Server. Um, when we're using single sign-ons, Jasper Report must synchronize and maintain users' information. Uh, every time the user signs in, if they specifically when the user is external user, we need to make sure um, we synchronize all the information that gets passed um, so that uh, um, you know we have the, our, our functionality within Jasper server works correctly, speci specifically the permissions and data filtering. Mm -hmm. um, we have implemented SSOs in different um, environments and our implementation kind of seamlessly, seamlessly integrates 
with JRS to kind of auto-sync user information. So this is something we've already provided to many customers. Um, okay, so let's have a look, quick look at Okta and what it is. Um, so Okta, you guys probably would have heard the name. It's a platform in the identity as a service category. So it kind of provides a service um, which organization can use to kind of implement their authentication and authorization platform. It is a cloud-based software provider um, and it kind of gives identity and access management to organizations in all in one place. It kind of helps companies to manage and secure user authentication into applications. So um, companies can kind of configure on cloud, you know, how their authentication and authorizations will happen. Um, they can create groups and everything and that gets passed on to third party applications. And for developers, it kind of allows them to build identity controls into applications, websites and services. They can seamlessly integrate a uh, single sign on as well. And lastly, Okta is very customizable and secure. It's also a drop-in solution to add authentication and authorizing services to your applications. So let's move on. What do we have? Um, all right, so a little bit about the standards. Oh. So a little bit about your, the, the standards that are available or there at the moment. So we have, mainly we have two standards. We have SAML and OAuth. Hey, hey Mehul, just a sorry, quick question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, just to understand uh, the context. Uh, so, uh, w what are are there other uh, competitors or similar services to Okta that you know of? Um, just to give an example. Uh, yeah. So, well, uh, a lot of the, the cloud-based providers like Azure, for example, we have the Azure AD, which is similar mm -hmm. to Okta. You know, they they support SAML implementation or OIDC. I believe AWS also, they offer some, some of this. Exactly, yeah. So cloud, cloud providers have their own, um, but Okta is kind of the one that kind of um, fits into all in one scenario. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so in terms of the standards, there are mainly two standards, SAML and OAuth. SAML was kind of mainly for the authentication part um, previously, and OAuth is mainly for the authorization part. SAML is a assertion markup language and it's open standard for exchanging authentication and authorization data between parties, specifically identity providers and service providers. Whereas the OAuth is uh, a protocol that enables secure delegated access. So it kind of lets um, application owner or resource owner control by someone else, um, control the access. Um, this kind of access requires tokens, so specifically JWT type tokens. Um, you can see the diagram, they kind of work similar, but uh, there are differences. So on the left diagram, you can see, um, you know, user launches an application, the application kind of receives the request and sends the SAML request to the identity provider, which is required in terms of SAML implementation. Um, that SAML then kind of authenticates the user based on the configuration and sends back the response to the application. And then the application checks that response and uh, logs the user in simple scenarios. So once that's um, logged in, that session will be kind of valid until that the browser is valid, the browser is open or session is valid for the length. And then the user will never have to log in again. The OAuth kind of works similar as well, that the resource owner kind of delegates the um, access to the client. The client would request an access and the access would go through the authorization server where the resource owner has delegated the access and then it would receive back, receive back a token which would have information regarding you know, who, who the user is, what access they have and everything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of similar approaches, but a little bit different in terms of authentication and authorization. And lastly, we also have Open ID Connect, which is um, an extension to the auth, uh, authorization framework mm -hmm. to kind of provide, um, to, to, to be able to uh, do authentication using auth as well. So Open ID is mainly for authentication using the auth approach. Mm -hmm. um, Open ID and SAML are both industry standards for federated authentication and both protocols encourage and standardize interoperability. Uh, Mihul, uh, quick question again, uh, if you don't mind, because uh, I'm uh, I'm learning here. <laughs> uh, so the when when it says here that OpenID Connect is a add an identity layer, uh, what what does that mean uh, really? Yeah. So the old framework didn't have any authentication 
it only had a authorization framework, authorization specification. So the open ID kind of extends that to have an authentication layer. Okay. And that's got what we call it. an identity layer. Got it, got it, thanks. Okay, so um, demo time. So I'm gonna do a little bit of demo. Um, there are three parts to this demo um, if we want to implement Okta together. So I'm just going to show you quickly the first part. Um, and I'm going to use um, a service provided by uh, Okta themselves. It's a dev server. We can, anyone can register and log in. Um, I have already registered. I'm just going to log in with my email address. Uh, and I have an admin account here. So I'll be able to kind of create applications and everything here. Um, so this is a must if you're going to use Okta, we have to kind of do some of the things. So what, what, what this allows you to do here um, is to be able to create people and create groups. Mm -hmm. So you can create, start creating your users here. I've got three users. And you can also create groups if you want to kind of easily manage um, access to different people. So I've created two groups here. I've got group called group of Jasper admin and Jasper user. Sorry, excuse me. I'm going to map these two to Jasper Server Administrator and Jasper Server User Role. Um, but a couple of things you have to do in Okta before you actually go into do anything in Jasper Server is to create people or create users, create groups. You also have to create an application. Now, this is the application that will be used to do the authentication authorization. In this case, I've created a, uh, an application called GRS Test. Um, I will show you how to create one. I mean, it's quite easy. You can just click on Create an App Integration. It will kind of ask you which um, integration you want to do. So you can either do SAML or OIDC. Um, in my case, I did. I'm not going to do it again, but I did OIDC, and I did a web application. And then if you click Next, um, it will kind of ask you to do some configurations, which I won't do it now, but I will show you the one I've done already. Um, so let's have a look at this one. Okay, so I created this application and it, it gave me a client ID. This is what I will need for configuration in Jasper server. And I've also given me a client secret, which I will need for the uh, authentication. Um, towards the end, you also need to configure your URLs. So your redirect URLs and your login URLs. In my case, this is my Jasper server URL. So I will just put this, this needs to match what you put in your Jasper server as well. So keep note of the, the URLs, the client ID, and the client secret. That's the three things we need before we start to do any work. And is it typical that the sign in and sign out um, logins would be the same? Um, yeah, because we're just going to direct to the auth, um, and then this will get redirected to Okta anyway. But so it's, a, it's a specific endpoint that <clears throat> it's created in Jasper. Exactly, yeah. It will just map that endpoint to, and then redirect to the Okta. Okay, got it, yeah. thanks. Okay, so once we've done that, um, there is one more thing we need to do under security, under API. We need to create an authorization server as we, as we saw in this diagram here. An authorization server is required for, for any resource access. So we, by default, Okta does come with an authorization server. It's just the default one. If you're using the default one, we can we don't need to do anything. Um, I have all the just modified claims because I need to send. Um, you can add any claims here. Yeah. I, I wanted to send all the groups and the user ID, so I've kind of modified it to send all the groups that contain Jasper and also send my user ID. These are the two things I send from Okta to Jasper server, and I will kind of parse those two things and create roles and user based on these two things. And these are these are added twice. So I uh, see once for access and one for type one one of type access, one of type ID. Exactly. You have to do, you have to do that uh, manually to add uh, twice. Right? Yeah, you have to do one for the ID access uh, for the ID token and one for the access if you're going to be using both of them. Okay. Got it. Um, so once you've done that, you're kind of ready. These are the, the, the three things we need to decide. Once you've done, you're ready. Um, so I'm gonna show you the second part, which is kind of quickly run you through the, the, the code or the packages we have. Um, and then I'll talk about the configurations in a bit. So let's just quickly go through 
uh, our implementation. So we have some Java classes here that are kind of written by our experts. Um, and these are the implementations of the OAuth framework or OIDC Connect. Uh, one key thing here is uh, the user detail service. I don't think you need to probably go into details for other ones, the standard ones. The user detail service is the one that we need to we need to kind of uh, pass a JWT token and get the user information. So I'll quickly show you what I'm doing here. Um, once I have my JWT token in the response uh, back. Sir, I can still see the, the Okta browser tab. I oh, don't know if okay. you meant to share something else. Okay, I was meant to share this. Can you see Eclipse now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it now, yeah. Okay. All right, so just quickly running through the code, um, we have some packages, the Java classes here that are written by our experts. And specifically, I wanted to kind of discuss this service implementation. This is the service that kind of um, passes a JWT token, gets the groups and the user ID and creates a, a user out of it. So you can see here, I'm get from the JWT token, I'm getting the user ID, which we send from Okta, and I'm getting the groups, which we also send from group, uh, Okta. We, map the groups to the roles in Jasper server and we map the user ID to the username. Uh, you can send any other information you want or even the attributes, but we're not doing the attributes here. Um, I'm just also getting the tenant name or tenant ID if it's if it's sent from Okta, otherwise I use the default one. So these three things I get from Okta and map it to the roles and then the user gets created. Yeah. No, I was just saying, uh, and, and these are, I assume, these three are probably kind of the basics or the basic uh, uh, properties that are typically required. Um, but just to give another example, I assume, for example, the if I have the, I don't know, the user email address, uh, that's another uh, something else that could potentially be passed. Is that a good example or would it be? Yeah, you can, you can pass in anything you want in the claim. You just have to configure your claim. Um, and once you have it configured, you can pass anything. So uh, you can add a new claim here. And, yeah. and for example, the, if it's user email address, uh, could we synchronize that to the uh, same field, uh, the email address in, in the Jasper username, the, uh, the Jasper user object as well? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. So you okay. just have to make sure you, you're able to get it from, um, you have the access to get the email address from the, the, the Okta configurations, and then you can map it to any way in Jasper you want. Okay. And yeah, so that's the only thing I'm doing. I'm getting the user ID, the groups. I'm, for each group, so I'm creating a role for Jasper. Um, and then those roles will get mapped. I'll show you how they will get mapped in a minute. So essentially what this does, this one just creates, um, when this code is ran, this will just create a role called um, group uh, group or Jasper admin and group or Jasper user. Two roles it will create because that's the groups I had it in my in my groups. So these two, the roles will be exactly the same name. And um, then what again, I, I think I think we're not seeing. Um, if you're showing the configuration, we're not seeing it on screen right now. Okay. Is it a text file? The, no, I was, yeah, I was just showing you the browser. Um, yes, yeah, so it would create these two Jasper, uh, these two roles in Jasper Server, exactly same name. Um, and then once you go back to, um, and then what happens is. Uh, further down the chain, um, those two, those roles will get mapped to the Jasper server user roles, and I will just show you how they will get mapped. So I have a XML file here, um, and this is the file that um, the users need to configure or the developers need to configure to kind of integrate Jasper server with Okta. Um, first, I will just take you to the role mapping because that's what we were just discussing. So just further down here somewhere, we kind of explain how the roles will be mapped in this property here. So we said the if there's a role called group or Jasper admin, um, which will be created by the service. If there's a role called this, map that to the role administrator. And then if there's a, a role called this, map it to the role user. That's, that's, that, that's how the mapping will happen. Uh, other configurations you need to do on this file, it's what we need to kind of set up the, um, start from the top. We need to set up the authorization location, which is by default. If you're using the default one, it's going to be v1 slash authorization. And so be your, your Okta server or to default v1 authorize. Um, your client ID, which you can get from the application you created. Uh, redirect URL will be your Jasper server where Okta will, Okta will redirect back the request. 
The token location will be default as well, so default v1 token. If you're using the default one, if you're using a new authorization server, then it will be the authorization server name v1 token. Um, and this is where the, the code will be, the code will call the uh, Okta to get the token from the, um, from the auth code. And finally, the client secret. Um, so client ID, client secret, we can get it from the application. The scopes will be open ID. Um, you can have other scopes if you define it, but we're going to use the default one. And once we've done that, obviously, again, here we have some configuration to do here. Um, this is the issue. This you can get it from Okta as well. Let me just show you. Yeah, so the issue URI is this one, which should map to what can you see? Can you see my eclipse? Come on. Yes. Yeah, okay. So that URL we map to this URL and then the audience and client ID again is the same. Audience is coming from the octa as well. Um this one is default. You don't have to worry about this one. And um, I think that yeah. So, so the the first one you're showing, uh, so the, um, the there are two beans basically you're configuring, right? This o o OIDC user details service, and then the one above, which one was that? This one. It's a proxy pre-authenticated processing filter. Okay. Yeah. So this one will take the request and talk to the Okta, and this one it's the one that creates the the user. Getting okay. it. Getting the. Um, so for information back for, for this bin, I see that you have um, a custom class that you created there that you showed us briefly before where you do the get the user details, etc. Right, this one exactly, yeah. So this one, so very simple, yeah. And um, but for the other one, uh, it's I don't see that, uh, so I guess it's the standard one. The, uh, that, so that, oh, no, sorry, you do have you the, see oh, that one here, yeah. Presentation filter, yeah. Sorry, this one, oh, there, okay, got it, got it. So um, uh, just a qu question uh, to, for somebody who, you know, let's say starting from scratch, um, you know, they, if they wanted to build this th themselves, you know, where, where would you recommend they start in terms of, you know, maybe using one of our existing samples and then modify that to, to create what you created here? Um, w for example, for the, the XML configuration file, is there already a sample file that they can start from or which one would they would you yeah we do have an external we do have an external authentication file that we ship with the standard product um it won't be specific to idc uh but there is an external one um is that for how, how is it called do you know how it's called the the sample one is it oauth or uh, i think it's called sample let me just quickly check Can find where it is. Yeah, it's one of these in the sample external sample config file. So we have the pre auth one, LDAP, CAS, DD, and I think the one you probably is this one. Um, I, I can't see it, but uh, what's the name? What's the file name? Uh, sample application context dash external auth dash SSO. Oh, there is, uh, there is an OAuth. Uh, sorry, do you say OAuth? No, it's a dash SSO. Oh, just SSO, generic SSO. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. No, it's just... my, yeah. my whole screen. Oh, there you go. That might be better. Okay, so it's for this file here. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Got yeah. it. Now no, I can see it. Um, it won't be exactly the same as OIDC, but you might have to customize it a little bit. Um, the idea is you there, there are libraries that you can use, I and mean, we use these libraries, um, which are from old implementations, but you still have to write your classes. Um, and how that will kind of integrate within Jasper. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, all these classes you're showing, uh, uh, starting with OIDC, um, the, I mean, they're all required all the time, um, or is it depending on the requirements you might need, you might need or might not need? Um, well, most of these will be required for OIDC. Um, each of these is a bean that gets uh, injected um, right, right, when right. this is loaded. So. 
these will most of these will be required, <clears throat> if not all of them. And uh, so similar question uh, for the code it's, itself, is there um, some starting point that people can maybe take from the existing uh, code that we provide? Um, um, with I don't, I don't think we provide these code uh, because this is premium content. Um, no, I mean, I meant uh, like- There, um, may, be, there may be samples. Yeah, there may be samples available, but it will, it will be different to, to the- Like the user detail service, for example, I, I assume that's uh, we have a base class that does that for the the um, the out of the box. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be probably be a different name. Um, right. But it, it could be it could be a little bit similar. But this is completely customized to sure. to kind of this to pass the JW token. So you won't see. I mean, you might see different methods, uh, same methods, names mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it it it. it and, and to be clear, uh, I think to everyone, so uh, obviously uh, our team, uh, the customer success uh, architect team, uh, we do this, you know, typically for uh, paying customers that, you know, have a, a customer success plan. And then, you know, they request, if the request is customization, we build it for them. Uh, but uh, it's good for, yeah. for for somebody who has the knowledge, you know, they, they might be able to build it themselves if uh, based on this uh, on your guidance basically yeah yeah of course i mean if anyone needs uh, implementation they can always contact us and you know we can get this implemented um all right um okay so once we've done this configuration um the only other thing we need to do is towards the end um it's to send set the redirect url and the yoga log out url which should be your jasper server url um and we also need to set this url here that's for the entry to the login. Um, apart from that, I think there isn't anything else we need to do at this point. Um, one thing I have done is I've, I have turned off a default role. So default internal role by default, it's role underscore user, which means every user that is created will have role user. So I have turned this off because otherwise anyone can anyone from Okta can log in. Um, the, the reason why I've turned it on turn it off because it's um, I'm mapping this role to the role user. So anyone from Okta is logging in, they, they have to have this role, Jasper user role, and then that will get mapped to role user and the user will be able to use Jasper server. Otherwise, um, it won't be. So any if anyone else tries to log in who doesn't have this role, then they won't be able to use Jasper server. So they, so they, to, so they, they don't get anything for free, basically. Uh, yeah, they'll be able to log into Jasper server, but they can't do anything. You'll just access the night for everything. It's like an empty blank page or something. Yeah, I mean, I think in this case, you'll we'll probably get 401, um, mm -hmm. but we'll test it out in a minute. So that's the second part. And third part is to kind of build this project once you've done your configuration and do a deployment. Um, so in my case, I I will quickly show you, I, I'm building my project to this class here. So that's my project in the web INF. I have classes which gets built. Um, the lib directory and the XML file. So essentially all I have to do is just copy the web INF. Actually, before copying it, um, I'm just quickly going to show you how it currently works. So if I currently go to Jasper Pro 8, uh, which is my application, it should redirect me to login.html of Jasper server because there's nothing deployed. And it will just ask me to log in. All right, there you go. So it's the redirect me to log in the HTML and I can log in. Um, yeah, so I'm logged in. So I'm logged in via the internal users. Um, so if you have any internal users, you can log in directly here. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy that code um, that we just built. So actually, before you do that, uh, I was curious about this. Uh, for <clears throat> so the login page, <clears throat> excuse me, the login page will still be um, available. The standard login page for internal users like super user. Correct. Yeah, but you have to go to specifically to this URL. Right. To to okay, but to log in the HTML. So uh, just come to the web in, so now we'll just replace this file here. It will deploy my packages. 
Um, okay, so my packages are deployed. I'm just going to restart the server. And meanwhile, that gets restarted. I will just quickly show you um, in Okta. I've already showed you what I wanted to show you. I'll just quickly go through. Um, so the key, the couple of key points we need to note if, um, make note of here is these um, these ticks here. Um, this this is how kind of Okta and Jasper Server talks to each other to get the token or get the code and then get the token. So we must have these ticked, authorization code, refresh token, implicit, and allow ID token with implicit grant type. These are the four things we need to have. Um, obviously, if there is a multi-factor authentication set up in Okta, you'll be able to use that as well. So when you try to log into Jasper server, it will redirect to Okta and then it will kind of wait for the MFA and then come back and then redirect back to Jasper server. So, which I will show you in a minute once uh, my server's back up. I don't have any MFA set up, but uh, if you well, had, well, they would. Well, while this is starting, um, <clears throat> so the, <clears throat> excuse me, the files that you copied um, that were in lib, um, those are just external uh, libraries, uh, but is that correct? Or... Yeah, so these are the library I showed you from my clips. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a classes folder, which other the actual, the actual uh, classes, class yeah. files, yeah, and we have the XML file. Okay, the yeah, three yeah. things I deployed um, to my Jasper server, and I restarted the server. Hopefully, it won't be too long. And now, if I if I go to this URL, this will be fine. It will stay at login.html. But if I remove this, if I just go to this URL, or I go to slash what it will both read out, it should read out me to Okta. Um, so let's try. Okay, what, one more question for me while this is loading uh, yeah, <laughs> to kill the time. Um, no, the have you? I mean, have you noticed any difference? Uh, this is so this is just report server eight point zero. Um, have you noticed any difference uh, in this implementation versus uh, I don't know seven point nine or seven point eight or five? Like previous anything of note? Yeah, so the the older versions probably not seven point nine, but maybe seven five or. Um, Earlier, they used to have um, the bean defined as a reference and a name, which wouldn't work, or reference and local, for example, here. Um, these are set to local, and this doesn't work anymore in the new spring, so we have to change it to the bean, referencing a bean. So, so it's mostly the on the configuration side, but uh, the code itself, uh, it's is it affected much or? No, I think the code code isn't affected much. Um, not that I've seen anything anyway. Okay, okay. It's only these the XML file. All right, so we have the server back up and running. Um, okay, so you can see I've already directly logged in. As soon as I went to Jasper Server Pro 8, I directly logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I'm already logged into the browser, so I'm going to log out here from Okta. So I don't have any Okta session. I'm going to log out from here. Um, and then I'm going to go back to Jasper Server Pro 8. So, okay, so you can see he's redirecting me back to Okta and it's asking me to log in into Okta. So every user have, would have to then log into Okta and then if they, if they authorize, Okta would redirect back then to Jasper Server. So, if I, for example, type something and I try to sign in, it will it won't let me sign in. Um, and if I put correct password, it will sign me in and for uh, redirect me back to Jasper Server. Okay, so there you go. It's so redirecting back to Jasper Server. Um, 
is sync my username and it's sync my roles, um, which I'll show you. So if I just go to users, I have, um, there's my user here, and you can see I've got two roles, role administrator and role user. Um, I'm just going to delete this user because this was previously created when I was testing. So I'm gonna delete this guy because we're gonna use that again to log in. Um, and I'm going to go to DevOctor. I'm gonna log out here. And I'm going to log out here. I'm going to go back to Jasper Pro 8, go back to Okta. I'm going to log in as a different user. Um, in this case, I'm going to log in as test. Okay, so you can see I've now logged in as test. I'm not an administrator because my menu is gone, manage menu is gone. Um, we can We can double check that in a minute. So if I just... So now I'm just a normal user. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sign back in here as myself. I'm going to sign out of here. Just I'm going to log in super easy just to show you quickly the, the role that was mapped. So now you see there's a new user created called test T because I logged in again. And it's only got role user, no administrator, because that's what we assigned in Okta can see here um, under the application. Okay, so two groups assigned, group Jasper admin and Jasper Pro, and then Jasper Pro only one, uh, two users, the test and me, and then this one's only me. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into this group. Uh, and I'm going to remove access for the test user. So I've removed access for the test user. Save this. Um, I would have to log out from here. So I'm going to sign out. Um, sign out as a super user, and I'll try to log in again as a test user. Okay, so if I try to log in as a test user, it shouldn't let me log in. Um, yeah, so it gives me 401 and I can't technically do anything else. Um, yeah, it could keep, because it's gonna keep going to Okta and try to authorize him and says, you're not allowed to use this application. So it sends back a response with a 401. Um, I'm going to log in again. So this time I'm logged in as myself, so hopefully it will it will refresh the session to myself. No, maybe not. I have to log out. No, it, it's the URL. Uh, you was missing something. Oh, yeah. Or eight, I think. Yeah, so you should go to Okta, get my session, and then it logs me in as myself because I'm already logged in here as myself. Um, and then we'll see here. Okay, so this user still exists, but he can't log in because it's externally managed and externally we said, you know, you can't log in. Um, essentially, they can't do anything. So that well, was well, my... I, If I understand correctly, this, I mean, the role user is still assigned here because it's a previous assignment, but as soon as the user logs in, it tries to synchronize and doesn't let the login happen, right? So that... Yeah, so Okta, Okta would send a, four, uh, a response with a 401 that this user is not authorized um, to log in because we don't have we, we haven't given access to that user. So it, it tries to synchronize and say, look, there's no role, so it won't let you log in. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't even synchronize. And um, once it's right. 401, it will just do nothing. Yeah, um, and, and, and no, that's what I was trying to explain. That's why we still see role user there because it not, as, as the login doesn't succeed, is not able to even synchronize the user. Yeah, th this is the previous synchronized mm -hmm. version. Right, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, a question, uh, Mihul, um, is there a way to, when the user, you know, if you click log out here in Jasper, um, to actually log out from Okta as well? Um, seamlessly? Yes, yes, there is. Um, uh, there, you have to find the, the Okta URL for logging out, um, which I believe it's, um, might be able to get it from the application. 
but I don't think that would be a good practice because then you get you kill all the sessions for all other applications as well. And so this log logout URL, I think, might be no, this is the sorry. I don't know. No, I think we have to we have to get the logout URL. I'm not sure where that is in Okta. Um, and then you just you have to modify the logout URL on Jasper server to to that one basically. Can you hear me, Kamal? Hello. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. I've got it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you just have to change this to whatever the logout URL of the Okta is, and then you'll be able to click on logout, and that should log you out from Okta as well. Cool. Okay. As I said, Thanks. that's not that's not a good practice because then you kill all the sessions. So it would be the other way would be a good practice. I mean, if you click log out here, it will log you out of everything else. If you keep log out on uh Yeah, so actually, yeah, that's a good question. So if you log out here, uh the other session is still valid, right? In Jasper. Um no, it should it shouldn't be valid. Um I mean if you refresh the page, it won't be that valid, but uh, you have to log out. Let's try. Let's not try that actually. Yeah, this will this will be valid because session ID is there. So you have, either have to kill the session ID, and then you'll be okay when you refresh the page. Yeah. So this is still there, but if I go to this one, well, it's still there because the session ID is still there. So you have to kill the session ID, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't think I have anything else left um, from the demo. Some key takeaways. Um, obviously, this slide will be available on our um, repository or on our page, and you'll be able to kind of get this information if you need. But some key key takeaways uh, if you guys need to just read through. Um, yeah, come on, that's it from me. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Um, before you stop uh, sharing, just um, can you go to last the second last slide, the resources? Just oh yeah, how, of course. Yeah. How, we just talk about briefly about this. So, um, yeah, just uh, you know, for uh, if you wanna check the our previous sessions, uh, you know, check the our wiki page. Uh, we have uh, recordings and list, um, you know, links to all the previous uh, webinars. And uh, if you want to ask follow up questions on, on what you've seen today, um, you know, you can use either the community answers website or, um, you know, actually at the very last slide, there is an email for Dr. Jasper. You can send us an email there. And um, yeah, I, th I think that's it. Uh, that's really it. And oh, we share, we'll, we'll obviously we share the slides also in the same uh, wiki page. So if you want to go back to the slides, they'll be there. Um, so yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Mihal. This was, uh, was great. Uh, anything else you want to add before we close? Uh, no, I think I've covered everything. Fantastic. Fantastic. Th th thanks everyone for joining okay. and uh, see, you. You, see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.